Hey guys, this is Ashley from Chip Builds, and today I'm going to show you how I go about creating a 3D printed pen blank that I will later then cast in resin and turn on the lathe. This video is going to focus solely on creating the 3D model. We're going to use Adobe Illustrator and we're going to use Fusion 360. If you don't have an Adobe subscription, you can use Inkscape. I'm not going to show you how to do this just because I personally hate that program. It's great that it's free, but I use the Adobe Suite every day at work and I would just really rather use the program that I'm proficient in. So let's dive in. Okay, so what I've done in Illustrator, I just have the basic document size. This is 8.5 by 11. And what we're going to do, the first thing, we're going to come over here to our rectangle tool. And we're just going to click anywhere on the screen. And then this bubble pops up where we can tell it how wide and what height we want. So we're going to make two different blanks. We're going to do the shorter blank that you can find for like a Sierra style type pen kit. And then we're also going to do the typical pen blank size, which will be one inch by five and a half inches. So, well, almost five and a half. Okay, so we know that we want the width to be 0.75 inches. And it's really important that when you're inputting these numbers, it's gonna default to points. And you wanna make sure that you type in IN so that it knows we're talking about inches. Then we'll come over here in the height and those blanks are typically two inches long. So I'll do that. So now you'll see we have this nice little outline and that's the size of the blank and that's going to be the four walls around whatever design we come up with. So let's save this real quick. Do pen tutorial. Right? So we're just going to change the stroke up here. I have the stroke set to millimeters just because that's what I typically work in when I'm going to bring something from Illustrator to Fusion, but we'll get into that. Okay, so we have our blank here, and we can do a couple different things, right? You can already get a pre-existing shape. You know, you can get like Mickey Mouse's head, and you can make a bunch of different copies of it. You can throw it in here, and then you can mess around with it, but that's not what I want to do. For this one, we're just going to take the line tool over here, line segment, and it's kind of cool. If you hover over here, this will tell you this is the middle it'll say intersect, right? And then here's the middle too. So if you wanna do that, here, let's just do, oops. So if you just hit a point, it will want you to do a specific length. So I'm gonna click and then I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna drag over to this other side. And then now that's directly in the middle, okay? And then so we can do a couple different things here. So we can you do option, drag and hold shift to keep it in place. And we can do this a couple different times. Right, just to see what we like. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna select oopsies, that's not what I wanted. So I'm going to select all of these. So click, hold shift, click, click, and click, and that's gonna grab the four of these. And then I'm gonna come up here to where my align options are. And right now it's set to align to artboard, and we are gonna want align to section, and I'm gonna distribute them evenly. But that did not work. Why? Oh, because that has a fill, that's why. Okay, so we don't want to fill in any of these shapes. So definitely take a look at that. That's a rookie mistake there. So I'm gonna grab these. And I'm gonna make sure that that outline's not selected. And there we go. So now these four lines are evenly spaced and I'm gonna group these. I'm gonna select them, Command G, and that's gonna group them. So now if you want, we know this top, this top line is our center. But if this is all you're going to go and you're going to stop, you can just select the whole thing. And because we grouped those, we can come up here and we can do the align horizontally and then we can do the line vertically. And then that will bring it up. And that's kind of interesting, so I think I might leave that. And then what else I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up that line again. I'm going to come down here to the middle. Right, so it says intersect. Oops, didn't mean to click that. So we're going to click, hold. And I'm going to come over here to this point, okay? And then I'm going to click here. So I'm going to hit V, the select tool. Then I'm going to come up here. I'm going to hit the line tool again. Okay, so we got that. So now I'm going to select these two lines. I'm going to come up here to edit. I'm going to do copy. And then I'm going to do paste in place. Okay, so now that pasted it right on top. I'm going to take the rotate, holding shift, 
till I do 180. Now I'm just going to take this and keep holding shift. See how if I don't hold shift I can move it, but if I hold shift it will lock it in place. And come up here to where it says intersect. And then now we have the same on each side. So I'm going to leave this one like this. It's kind of interesting. I don't know. But the next thing we want to do is we want to turn all of these paths in uh, into shapes. Because right now it's a path. You can see if we do the direct select selection, we can have that point, that point, whatever, right? So I'm going to select all of these inner lines. I'm going to come up here to object. And I'm going to hit expand. And we're going to expand the fill in the stroke so that it becomes one path. And so now you can see, if we look in close, we have all these overlapping shapes. So while that's all still selected too, I'm going to come over to Pathfinder, and I'm either going to use Merge or Unite. So let's see, let's do Unite and see what happens. So that Unite worked. So if we undid it and we did Merge, same thing. Okay, so let's Unite it. And so now we have our Sierra Pen link. So I'm going to just double check over here on our Layers panel, make sure... Nothing crazy happened, so this looks good. So I'm going to just bring this to the side. So now we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to get a rectangle tool. I'm going to click. This time we want the width to be one inch because this is going to be a full size pin blank. And the length is going to be 5.5 inches. Then I'll hit enter. So now we just want to switch this to a stroke. I'm going to do the same thing, come up over here. You know, you can go anywhere from 1.2 onwards. It could be whatever you want. And then if you want, you can also just expand this shape here already. It's up to you. So this one we want to get a little bit crazier. Not sure, you know, want to make it interesting. So what I've done for some other ones that I've made, I'm going to get the ellipse tool. And I'm just going to come in here, click drag, and then I'm going to hold shift. Okay. We're going to make sure this is the same width as that line. And then, so you can see now it's not aligned, we'll click these two, align it, and then there we go. So that's going to be kind of interesting. So now we can hold option and click and drag this and shift, right? And we can just keep doing that a couple times, however many times you want. And then if you really want to, you can come in here, distribute them all equally, Right, you can group them if you want to, and then you can take the group and the outline, and you can do one of these. Make sure it's all distributed evenly. So I do sell a similar one to the circle one that we're creating on my Etsy store. I'll put a link to that below. But so this is just something interesting that you can do. So then you can come in here, and you can start making some smaller circles, right? So you want to make sure they're connected, they're touching each other. So we'll zoom out a little bit so we can see that one's touching. And this is 1.2 still. So I'm going to just do that same thing of where we're copying it with the option and clicking and dragging it out to make a copy. Not to work. We're going to do minus front. I mean, we're not going to do minus front. We're going to do trim. And so that, the, that cut everything um, around that shape. So now we're going to ungroup it. And I'm going to just select all these ones, just chilling out on the side and delete them. So now everything that we want is left inside the rectangle. We can now select all of it. And now we are going to merge it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm going to look in between these shapes that got merged and make sure there's nothing, no crazy little, see we got a little sloppy, that's overlapping, but you know what, that's going to be okay. So these corners all look fine, but like this one, so I'm going to use A, the rec select, click it, hit delete, click this one, hit delete, click that one and hit delete. Now that path has gone. So it just makes it so it's a little bit easier to kind of manage, you know? So I think the rest of them will be fine. So we're going to save this once more before we close it. Let's get this one kind of in that same spot. So now we're going to come up here, we're going to go to File, and we're going to export this into a DXF, okay? Because that's the file that Fusion 360 is going to want us to work with. So come down here to our options, DXF, click Export, 
And this is the thing you got to really make sure you do. You come over here and it says one point equals one units. That's not what we want. We want to switch it to inches and then we're going to say one inch equals one unit. And that's the measurements that we have in Fusion and how it's set up. So now that we've done that, they should all be good to go. And then now we can jump into Fusion 360. Okay, so now that we saved that as a DXF, we're going to jump into Fusion. And this is where we're going to take that sketch and turn it into a 3D model that we can print on our 3D printer. So when you open up Fusion, this is kind of the basic setup that you'll get. Uh, the one thing I always like to do is I like to save the document first. Uh, but first I'm going to put it in the correct folder. Some things I have in folders, some things I don't. Really personal preference. But I have this folder full of different pen blanks. And so I'm going to save it in here. I'm going to say just pen tutorial, I think is what we named the thing. And then now... We're going to bring that DXF in. I know Fusion kind of seems a little crazy if you're new to things, but for this specific operation, it's super simple. So we're going to come over here to Insert. We're going to insert DXF. You choose which one of these planes, if you want the Z, the X, or the Y. So I'm going to put it on this one. That way, when we bring it into our slicer program, the model is already going to be in the correct orientation for it to print, and it just saves you a step. Okay? So what I like to do is I like to move this so it's kind of in the, the center origin here. Click OK. If you don't want to do it then, you can always go into the move copy command and you can move it then. Okay, so let's, so this is the home view. We're going to look at the top. And let's just do this one at a time. That way it doesn't get too crazy of a timeline. We have our sketch here and we're going to hit E. And what I like to do is I like to make the base layer two millimeters thick. It's just kind of a good base to make sure your resin's not going to leak out of there through any holes or anything. And just kind of the baseline that I've done all my pen blanks for. So we're just going to select these base parts. Over here, see this is telling us how many millimeters tall we want it to be. And then you can hit enter. And then, oh no, where did our sketch go? Everything's gone. So that's just one of the default things that Fusion does. It automatically turns off the sketch, but you just come over here, toggle the light bulb, and now everything's good. Okay, so now we're gonna hit extrude again, and this time we're gonna hit this outline. And this time we're gonna do 25 millimeters, but we have to make sure that this operation says join. Because if you don't do join, they're gonna be separate bodies, or it might try to cut it away, or intersect there, or whatever. So we're gonna make sure that's join, and we're gonna hit okay. And then now, if you kind of move this cube around, you can see that it's a three-dimensional shape. So we know that it's 25 millimeters tall, which is basically about an inch, which actually, that's too tall for this because we want it to be 0.75 inches. So we'll go back in and edit that. So now let's focus on the circles now. This one's going to be just a little bit trickier, but basically the same. I'm going to hit E for extrude again, and let's start with the base again. So we're going to click these different circle bases just make sure you go don't go too crazy fast that we don't miss anything all right now we have everything again two millimeters perfect okay we're gonna go in hit extrude again e and then the nice thing about this is because we joined it all together it's one shape and so now we can just do 25 because we know this one's going to be an inch tall and inch wide and uh oh, see over here, it wants to be a new body. I personally don't want that. I want it to be joined, that way it's one uniform shape. Hit OK. And then check it out. You have these two different things. Now, I always like to name these, right? These are lines. Okay, these are circles. And if you want to take it a step farther, like if you're going to post these files on the Thingiverse or my mini factory or whatever, you can embed a logo of yours into this too if you like. I personally like to do that just that way if someone, you know, posts it online, it kind of gets linked back to me and then just gets a little bit more exposure. So I'm going to click on this face and I'm going to come in here and then click insert DXF again. And so this is just a smaller version of my logo that's roughly the correct scale for this size of a project. I've put this on a couple of the other ones and just kind of eyeball it, center it. Okay, so we have that in there and so now what we want to do is, you've guessed it, we want to do another extrude operation, but this time instead of joining we're going to cut away. 
You can't go too deep on this because you don't want there to be holes for the resin to spill through. So we're going to just select all these different shapes like so. Okay, and so what we're going to do, because we want to cut, I'm going to do minus 0.2. So it's really shallow, but it's shallow enough that it's not going to mess with the integrity of the walls or anything. And it's going to be shallow enough, too, that you can see the logo pretty well. I'm going to come up here, and we're going to go to Tools. And so what that is, is going to enable us to make these 3D objects into an STL file that you can send to a slicer program and send to your printer. So I just like to come over here and click the body itself. I'm just going to click Make. We're going to uncheck Send to 3D Print Utility. And I'm just going to leave the refinement and medium. Click OK. And then that's basically it. So in the next video, we'll go over slicing these models and 3D printing them and filling it with resin. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. If you have any questions about this process or any ideas or just I don't know, any comments really, just leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, Fusion 360 is a really great free CAD modeling software. Um, there is a bit of a learning curve, but I think it's definitely worth it to learn. And if you don't want to use Illustrator, you can easily recreate these in Inkscape. Uh, there's tons and tons of tutorials on Inkscape on YouTube, so I'm personally not going to do any on them, um, but you can easily find what you're looking for. So thanks for watching. See you guys.